Well, city leaders have a better idea this morning what it is you think about a proposed transit system that could radically change the way part of Central Avenue looks and works. The $100 million project would call for dedicated lanes for futuristic looking buses that control stoplights and have their own light rail like stations. It's known as the Bus Rapid Transit System and it would run from Tramway to 98th Street, a 15 mile route. Now, there was another public meeting on the concept last night. Some people liked the idea, others said they wanted more information before deciding how they felt. My concern would be how frequent are the stops going to be? Some folks had concerns about the congestion, especially in areas like Knob Hill. The city plans to do a study to provide more answers. The last public meeting, by the way, is set for tomorrow. It's going to be at the Albuquerque Museum of Art and History. Also last night, the county commission signed off on a plan to ask the federal government for $50 million to pay for this proposed bus rapid transit system on Central Avenue. It also plans on requesting $11 million to help for the same type of project to run along Paseo from the Northwest Mesa to I-25. A developer wants to build a major apartment complex on Central Avenue in downtown Albuquerque, and this developer is now asking the county for help. Well, the developer is requesting uh, property tax abatement, so essentially they wouldn't pay property taxes um, in lieu of providing a lower rent rate for workforce housing. For now, the county commission has deferred taking any action on the request. Now, this is what the Silver Moon Lodge complex would look like. The three-story, 150-unit complex would be built on the site of Old Silver Moon Motel near 10th Street. The city tore the crime-ridden motel down last year, and the property is now sitting vacant. The apartments would be reasonably priced and catered to people who work in downtown Albuquerque. Plans to create what will look like a mini city near the Pitt and Lobo Village are moving forward. Yesterday, the UNM's Board of Regents approved the development deal that would add shops and restaurants to the area. The university and the developer, Cleveland-based Fairmont Properties, will now figure out how much the land is worth near Cesar Chavez and University to move forward on building. The State Department of Transportation today is seeking input from designers and builders about how to keep traffic moving during the massive overhaul that will be done on the Paseo I-25 interchange project. Albuquerque's mayor wants the work to start by the end of next summer. People who rely on the Paseo I-25 interchange to get to and from work are looking forward to the final outcome. One thing transportation experts want you to remember is that the traffic will likely get worse before it gets better. A project like this is kind of like operating on a patient while they're awake. We're told crews will likely do as much work as possible at night. In the meantime, commuters should start investigating new ways to get to work. Might be a good idea. The $93 million project could take up to two years. The minimum wage increase in Albuquerque is set to kick in at the beginning of the year, but some restaurants want the city to phase in the mandated increase. Minimum wage will go from $7.50 to $8.50 come January. The New Mexico Restaurant Association is now asking the city council to phase in that increase so that restaurants can better budget for the pay increases. Well, city councilors have yet to take any action on the idea and no word yet if they even will. I believe that phasing in is a, is a difficult proposition to do, especially considering that the wage starts in January. Supporters of the wage hike, like the group Olay, which fought hard to get voter support, says the increase should kick in as planned. A man accused of raping and beating a woman in Albuquerque is set to change his plea in court this afternoon. Detectives say they have linked Ryan Estrada's DNA to the attack of a 42-year-old woman back in 2010. The crime happened in her Northeast Heights apartment. Now, cops say the victim was raped and tortured and nearly died. She suffered brain damage and can no longer speak. The killer in a notorious New Mexico murder has died. 31-year-old Carlos Herrera died in prison recently due to natural causes. Back in 2000, he attacked 17-year-old Ricky Martinez and killed his girlfriend, Karen Castanon, as they walked to the pilgrimage to Chimayo on Good Friday. Herrera was sentenced to two life sentences. 
Well, busted water pipes, they are bound to happen whenever freezing temperatures set in. It can also be a hassle, no doubt, and very expensive for homeowners. Experts say now is a good time to remind you of some simple things you can do to avoid such a headache, especially since another storm could be on the way in a couple of days. Our News 13's David Romero is live in Northwest Albuquerque with details. David, you're freezing out there, I can tell, but this is a great story to do now because folks really, really need to do something about their homes. Exactly right, Elizabeth. Not just those storms, but the cold temperatures that we have to go through every morning and the homes are exposed to. And of course, water officials say that by going over a checklist of at least five things, you can save yourself the trouble of one of those busted water pipes. Now, water officials today plan to launch a campaign to show off that checklist to homeowners. Those five items include wrapping exposed pipes on the outside of the house with any sort of insulation, shut down your sprinkler system, drain it, roll up any hoses that are outside, Third, you want to put the faucets inside your house on a slow drip when it's going to be really, really cold outside. Fourth, open up the cabinet doors to areas underneath sinks to allow some room temperature air to get into those pipes. That makes that takes care rather of the fifth step in keeping the thermostat at no less than 55 degrees in the house. Now, if after all that a pipe bursts, the most important thing to know is where the emergency shutoff valve for the water is in your house. That's burst. You can get that water shut off on your own without having to call us to come out and do it for you. So we're happy to do that, but sometimes because of the backlog of calls, it just takes a long time. Now, in cutting down on that backlog of calls by saving the time of not calling the water utility authority, by taking care of the stuff yourself, that's going to help them get to other big, uh, big water main breaks when they happen. And of course, if you remember back in the winter, that big freeze that we had back in 2011, they experienced at least 3,500 calls in the course of just three days. Elizabeth, back to you. Yeah, very good advice, David. Thank you so much for the reminder. Stay warm if you can. By the way, that emergency number that uh, for the U Water Utility Authority is 842-9287, 842-9287.